morning and welcome to our midweek Celtic prayer. What a tough week we are all having. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I begin with a few words from a roughly joy. We are called to love, to be loved, to never forget our own insignificance. To never get used to the unspeakable violence and the vulgar disparity of life around us. To seek joy in the saddest places. To pursue beauty to its lair. To never simplify what is complicated or complicate what is simple. To respect strength, never power. Above all, to watch, to try and understand, to never look away and never, never to forget that another world is not only possible, she is on her way. And sometimes, on a quiet day, we can hear her breathing. One thing I have asked of the Lord, this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Who is it that you seek? We seek the Lord our God. Do you seek him with all your heart? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your soul? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your mind? Amen. Lord, have mercy. Do you seek him with all your strength? Amen. Christ, have have mercy. We declare our faith. To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Psalm 41. Blessed are those who consider the poor and needy, the Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and restores their life, that they may be happy in the land. He will not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed, their sickness, Lord, you will remove. And so I said, Lord, be merciful to me, heal me, for I have sinned against you. O oh Lord, be merciful to me. My enemies speak evil about me, asking when I shall die and my name perish. If they come to see me, they utter empty words. Their heart gathers mischief when they go out, they tell it abroad. All my enemies whisper together against me. Against me they devise evil, saying that a deadly thing has laid hold on me and that I will not rise again from where I lie. Even my bosom friend whom I trusted, who ate of my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. O oh Lord, be, be merciful, merciful to me. me. But you, O oh Lord, be merciful to me, and raise me that I may reward them. By this I know that you favour me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. Because of my integrity you uphold me and you will set me before your face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. <coughs> o Lord, be, be merciful, merciful to me. me. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. amen. Our first reading this morning is from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 5 to 12. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere. What are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honour subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. 
As it is, we do not see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus, who for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honour because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of our salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. And our Gospel reading is taken from Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 to 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simeon and Andrew and James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons, he, and he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go to the neighbouring towns, that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. One of my best supports during this pandemic has been of Richard Raw, who sends into my email box each day a very beautiful meditation, and I recommend that you sign up for it. It's free and it is very beautiful. He helps me face the awfulness of the moment. He helps me have courage, and he helps me to simmer hope for the future. And I'd just like to read you a hopeful story from Richard, Richard Raw. We are living through a period of global disorder. People around the world are experiencing tremendous suffering, uncertainty, disruption to their lives. Reality is being unveiled. Systems of evil and injustice are seen in greater clarity and our collective normal has been radically upended. Walking through this chaos and despair can be difficult, but ultimately it is when everything seems adrift that the spiritual journey becomes both an anchor and a sail. God uses tragedy, suffering, pain, and even death to guide us into greater love. We human beings fall easily into despair, and from the very beginning we invented stories that enabled us to make sense of ourselves and the world we inhabit. Stories give us a sense that life has meaning and value. Stories are not about opting out of this world, but are about how they enable us to live more intensely within it. And in these dangerous times, our whole planet now needs more than ever a good story to live in and to live by. There are a number of stories competing for the hearts and imagination of humanity as we emerge together in this new century and millennium. There's the regressive stories of threats from fundamentalists, or there's the narcissistic stories of secularism, consumerism, and all that nihilism, for example. Once taken to the heart of human culture, each of these stories will produce its own kind of world. So the stories we believe in and live in today has a lot to do with the world we create for our children, our grandchildren and descendants 100,000 years from now. 
The stories we create today are crucial for the future of the universe. But life is pretty grim now, and of course it follows there are a number of repetitive stories of gloom and doom going the rounds, that it's all too late and nothing can change. However, around the margin, another narrative has been taking shape during these most recent moments of history. In this narrative, human envision learning to live in harmony with one another and with the boundary conditions or laws of nature. We imagine seeing all our fellow humans and all living things as part of one family of relations, sharing in the same unfolding or song of creation. We imagine ourselves creating conditions in which peace and well-being are not only possible, but normal and inevitable conflicts can be resolved through justice, kindness, wisdom, and love. And so the amazing 13.8 billion year story of the cosmos continues to unfold in this little corner of the universe. We hope to tell a story of justice, joy, love, and peace for the benefit of future generations who will be born into the story that there is no us and them at all. This is a cosmic and inclusive story that demands healing more than punishment. It is a cosmic and all-inclusive story which, if believed and lived out, leads us to a very different future, one of healing instead of conflict. We say the canticle. Christ as a light, illumine and guide me. Christ as a shield overshadow me. Christ under me, Christ over me. Christ beside me, on my left and on my right. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom I speak, in the mouth of each who speaks unto me. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all-powerful. Christ as a light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and on my right. Let us pray. Loving God, as the sun lingers on the world's other side each morning, and the twilight of the evening shadows eke ever into was our, what was our day that now seems to have become our night. When stars seem older as the nights get longer, and the Christmas season is mostly packed away and over, we discover, Lord, that we have arrived in a new year like no other. <clears throat> Lord, we don't have a clue what this day will bring. But you are not only the author of the mystery of life, you are that very mystery itself. For you, beauty does not reside in the heavens, but is among the red kites circling the skies. The hellebores flowering, impervious to weather, and of the hares that claim ownership in our surrounding fields. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God who waits with us and walks beside us, who speaks into all our memories and shares our every thought, we pray especially at this time for broken peoples, for broken hearted and the broken spirited. We long for the challenge of COVID to not stop our homes be homes of holiness, grace and goodness, <clears throat> we pray for all homes overwhelmed by COVID lethargy or bitter relationships. We pray for all who feel unsafe at this time, that they might find strength to speak out and receive help. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. Loving God, <clears throat> we pray for our families and all we love and laugh with, whom we've met virtually this year. Lord, technology is great, but we've come to acknowledge that we live and dwell in our relationships, that without each other we are not right, and neither is our world. 
Help us to never forget this year as a time we learnt firsthand how much we need each other's love, care, support and friendship. Help us never again to be blind to the suffering and exploitation of others or our earth again. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Loving God, we pray for leaders of the world to be wise. We pray for those countries who endure endless simmering wars, who are now being decimated further by coronavirus. We pray for the crisis in America, and we ask you to protect all those who are offering themselves to help restore and heal the worthiness of a nation. Here in the UK, we pray that our relationships with Europe will mend, and that each small business and job that is affected by Brexit may find a hopeful way through. We pray for trawlermen, for farmers, and for all those who dwell on borders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you fill all things with a fullness and hope that we can never comprehend. We thank you for leading us into a time where more of reality is being unveiled for us all to see. We pray that you will take away our natural temptation for cynicism, denial, fear and despair. Help us have the courage to awaken to greater truth, greater humility and greater care for one another. May we place our hope in what matters and what lasts, trusting in your eternal presence and love. Listen to our hearts longing for the healing of the suffering world, and we pray for all those we love, for those we struggle with, and for all of our communities. Amen. Our collet for this morning. Everlasting God, whose servant Hilary steadfast confessed your Son, Jesus Christ, to be both human and divine, grant us his gentle courtesy to bring to all the message of redemption in the incarnate Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.